I'm going to fall away straight away with Tabu who phoned us with a question that is based on the remainder theorem. Tabu, good evening. Good evening, sir. How are you? I'm fine and you, young I'm man? I'm good. Where are you phoning from? I'm phoning from Parktown. Parktown. Oh, around the corner. Which school do you go to? Um, I go to Central Johannesburg College. I'm a tricky right. Okay. Yes. Okay, I see. Tabu, I'm just going to give your question to the viewers and then we're going to talk about it. Okay. Folks, Tabu's question says, if f of x is given to us and it's a polynomial of degree 3, so it's a cubic, 2x cubed plus bx squared plus qx minus 7 is the polynomial. Then it tells us that if it is divided by x minus 2, the remainder is 1. And if divided by 2x minus 3, the remainder is 11. And now they want us to solve for p and for q. Now, Tabu, that is based on the remainder theorem. Do you know what the remainder theorem says? Um, I think I do. Okay, try and tell me. Um, if f of, um, I think of f of x equals to zero. Yeah? Um, yeah, I'm so there. <laughs> okay, let me write it down and remind you about this. Okay. The remainder theorem, folks, this is what we need to use here and this is what we need to know to be able to answer this question. Now, Tabu, I just want to tell you, I doubt it. I'm, only, I'm almost 99% certain this type of question will not be asked in the exam. Okay. Because if you read the curriculum docs, it is though the, the remainder theorem and the factor theorem that you need to solve the cubic equation with. So variations of that, I'm not so sure if that is going to be asked, but let's see in any case how it works. Okay. Okay, the theorem says if f of x is divided by a factor or, uh, uh, yeah, ax minus b, then the remainder, let's write that out, will be f in the point positive b divided by a. So all you do, Tabo, is you take whatever I've given you over here and you quickly check where's that zero. So where's ax minus b equal to naught? It happens when x is, the b goes over and I divide by a. And that is what I plug into my polynomial. Are you with me? Okay, then the factor theorem comes in Tabu and it says, you know what? If this remainder is zero, I've got a factor. Okay, so the factor theorem is in a way an extension of the remainder theorem. It tells you that if that remainder is naught, then you're ready to start factorizing this polynomial. Are you happy? Yes, sir. Okay, now let's just practice one or two of these before we go back to our question. I say to you, f of x is divided by x minus 5. How will I find the remainder if I look at this information at the top? How will I find the remainder here? What must I do? Equate x minus 5 to 0. Okay, and then x becomes? Five. Five, yes. Exactly. So I find the remainder by going to whatever f is and by plugging in a positive 5 in there. Are you happy with that? Yes, okay. I think we're ready to go back and answer this question. Now the information they gave me, Tabu, yes. is x minus 2 leaves a remainder of 1. Now yes. translate that for me. How am I going to use that in terms of f? Now you're going to equate x minus Two to zero, then you're gonna get two, then you're gonna substitute the two into the equation. Okay, well done. So f of two is gonna equal what? F is gonna equal um, that. Like they told me the remainder oh, it's equal to one. is one. Do you yes, agree? This yes. is the remainder, are you happy? Yes. But they gave me the value now, and that remainder's value they told me is one. Yes. Okay, and all I need to do now is go to f and I need to plug my x's in. Yes. 
Folks, that's what the remainder theorem says. If I took f and I divided it by x plus 7, to find the remainder, I need f in the point negative 7. And in this case, they just gave me that remainder. So let's quickly do that. 2 times 1 cubed is 2. 1 squared, remember the, oh, sorry, it's not 1, it's 2. Let's go back. So 2 times 2 cubed over there, plus p times the 2 squared, plus q times 2, the x becomes a 2, yes. minus the 7 is giving me that 1. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay, so now I'm going to go quick. 16, 8, remember table 2 to the power 3 is not 6, it's yes, 8. it's 8. <laughs> Good, times that 2 is 16. Plus the 4p, plus the 2q, scoop that over, that gives me an 8. Are you happy? Yes, sir. And I can now simplify. What, what do I do? I say 4p plus 2q equals the 16 goes over, negative 8. Yes. And then I divide the whole thing by 2. Are you happy yes, with that? Yes. Okay, so then I'm going to get 2p plus q is negative eight. 4. Negative 4. Yeah, remember? Four divided by 2. Aha, okay. uh -huh. yes, that sir. divides by 2, that and the other one divides by 2. Okay, sir. Okay, now I'm going to do exactly the same with the other factor that they gave me, but this time around I've got to be very careful. Because if you look at that factor, it's over here, yes. it is an ugly fraction. Yes. Can you see? Yes, sir. Okay, so what must x become, Tabu, for that one? It's going to be 3 over 2. That's it. f of 3 over 2 is equal to? 11. 11. Good. Tabo, can you see what you're supposed to do? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm going to go very quick with this because it's, it's basically doing the same thing twice. Okay. Okay. So, once you've done that, once you've taken f and you've worked out 3 over 2 and you've made it equal to 11, Tabo, you're going to get an equation that tells you that 9p plus 6q is equal to 45. Okay. Yes. Please just do it very slowly because of that fraction. Okay. Okay. Yes, and sir. once you've got the fraction, you'll see the LCD of that fraction is 4. Multiply right throughout that equation with 4 and get rid of that fraction at that point. Okay. Okay. Yes. Can you, what can I, can I simplify this, Tabo? Can you simplify? This one. Is there a common factor between 9, 6 and 45? Yes, the three. The three. So if I divide each one by three, I get three p plus two q is equal to fifteen. Yes, sir. Okay, and that's my second equation. What am I going to do from there on? Mm, you're gonna. I think you're gonna do the elimination or something. Exactly. So you're gonna take these two things and solve them yes. simultaneously. Can you do that? Yes, I can, sir. Okay, Tabu, can I leave that there then? Oh, it's fine, sir. I'm, I'm just going to give you the final answer so that once you try this by yourself now, yes. that you can see that the P has to be negative 23 or the Q then, and the Q, sorry, not an or, the Q is then equal to 22. So let's just quickly look at the method again, Tabu, because if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do the same thing twice. Okay. Let's talk about this. They've given me the cubic. That cubic had two variables. It had the P and the Q. Yes. Now, if they ask you to solve two variables, you need two bits of information. Agreed? Yes, sir. And those two bits of information they gave you were those two things that gave you the remainders when you divided them in. You translated it beautifully. The rest is history. You just substitute, you form two equations, and you solve them simultaneously.